minutes. Uh, obviously, we're like 20 minutes behind schedule, which isn't ideal. Um, so uh, I'm posting this link everywhere. Because for some reason, YouTube doesn't want to play ball today. First time that's happened, but... Uh, um, yeah. So we should be live on Facebook. Annalie is here. Wonderful. We've got some people up in here. Okay, good, 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 good. We're back. We're rolling. Thank you for bearing with me through this very painful technical difficulties. Uh, for some reason, for, for some reason, YouTube doesn't want to uh, stream. So uh, we're over on Facebook instead. Sorry about that for everyone. I know we've knocked about 20 minutes. We're about 20 minutes late now, which is not ideal, but it looks like we're here. So we got Aaron, we got Annalie, we got Irene, we got Daniel, we got George. Wonderful. So you found me. That's good. Um, we're going to have to go super fast now because we, we've eaten into our time somewhat significantly. Um, so let's get started without further ado. Um, where I've got to find all my stuff now. I'm running way behind. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me. This is wonderful. Aaron, Annalie uh, says Elon Musk screwed it up. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Katerina uh, said, you did hear, see and hear me on YouTube. I don't think so, because I was pulling up the live and it wasn't there. It seems to have recorded it, but it didn't, it wasn't broadcasting it live. So, um, so yeah, okay. I'm going to pull up my, uh, my slides here and I need to find my links and then we'll get started. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I know that uh, I'd, maybe I should have tested YouTube earlier in the day. Never had that issue before, but we're, uh, we, we're here at last. So thank you for bearing with. Um, okay. I'm just going to share my screen and we'll get started. Hopefully you can see and hear me okay. Looks like we're good. And, um, yeah, cool. All right. Great. Um, hi from Greece says dream big collectibles. Cool. And Eric says the machine uprising has begun. Yeah. It seems like it, doesn't it? Between that and, uh, all the AI art stuff. Um, okay. Here we go. 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 Here we are. Someone's saying it's working for me. I think that's on Facebook. Yeah. So like I'm streaming now on like StreamYard is telling me I'm streaming on YouTube and I click on the YouTube link and there's like nothing there. So um, hopefully it's going to record this and uh, it will be on YouTube afterwards so people can find it. But um, no worries. Um, we're here now. Thank you for joining me. We've got Gustavo Svetlana from Ireland. Henning is here. Hello to you. Wonderful. It's great to uh, have so many of you here, uh, even after 20 minutes late and technical issues. Uh, Liz says we can see it on YouTube. Really? What can you see? Can someone send me a link to the YouTube link that you're talking about? Is it this me talking right now? Because I've pulled it up in few different places and it did not work at all i'm just going to try it in income oh it is live oh my goodness okay crazy right now i'm annoyed um <laughs> okay uh thank you jeremy yeah i just pulled it up in like an incognito window and it seemed to work so um okay whatever hey we're here let's go Let's stop worrying about it. Uh, we can, we'll fix it for next week. Next week will be completely slick and uh, no technical issues. So uh, today, what we're going to do, we got some, uh, I'm going to do a super quick intro. We're going to critique some designs. So thank you to everyone who sent some designs in. And, um, and then I'll tell you how to get more help if you want it from me. So does that sound good? Let's go. We got about 35 minutes. Um, if you're seeing me, uh, Ray says the feed you're seeing on YouTube is a shoddily crafted AI clone. Yeah, that sounds like that might be the case. Um, my name is Michael Essick. I am a t-shirt designer based in Manchester in the UK. And uh, 
I sell on all these different places and I license my art in various different channels and distribution routes, uh, routes, we would say in the UK. And uh, yeah, I, I've been doing this for almost 10 years. So I've got quite good experience of what sells, what works when it comes to creating designs for products. So print on demand is obviously a big part of my uh, business, but I also license my art uh, through brick and mortar stores. And we do, we have calendars, we have mugs, we have all kinds of different things uh, that my artwork goes on to. So um, in this session today, oh, here's some the kind of designs I do. So I do a lot of puns and uh, jokes and that kind of stuff. So uh, this is my kind of bread and butter area. So if this is your kind of thing, then um, you probably find this useful. And uh, this is what the typical kind of um, strategy, I guess you'd say, or yeah, strategy for me, you know, we have a subject, a topic or a trend or something, and then we have an idea for a design. And then I turn that idea into a design and then I upload it and distribute it. So that could be on Redbubble or Amazon, or it could be on Etsy, or I could send it to one of my art licensing partners. Um, but then it goes up for sale and then I make money and it's basically rinse and repeat. Um, the more ideas you have, the more designs you put out, the more you have a strong portfolio and the more money you can make in the long term. So that's my business model, if you like. And what we're going to focus on or what I tend to focus on is the idea part. So we have some designs here that we're going to review and I'm going to be paying particular particular attention to um, the idea side as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, um, I've got everyone everyone who submitted a design or wanted me to look at their store. I've got you in a list here um, in this uh, list on uh, a Google Sheet. And uh, what I'm going to do is go through this. And however many we get through, we've got about half an hour or so. Um, I'll critique those designs and stuff. Now, I just wanted to pull up a couple of things before we get started, because if you're watching the, this for the first time, or this is the first time you've seen me do a design critique like this, um, there's probably a couple of principles that would be really helpful for you to, to understand. Um, and there was a couple of things that jumped out. A few of you were good enough to give a bit of context in your emails um, when you sent over your design. And um, a couple of you, and I won't name names, but a couple of you said, uh, some things that were like big red flashing warning lights to me. One of them was, I try to make cool things that everybody could like. Now, this is a big like, wah, wah, wah. Um, this is not uh, what, what we want. This is not um, likely to lead to sales um, over time because this means that you're, you're not thinking about a sp you know, specific group of people or a niche or a community or a market. Um, if you're trying to make cool things that everyone could like, um, you're really probably not going to be making something that anyone could like. Um, we really need to narrow that down. So that was one warning thing I saw. Um, you know, you can't make you can't make something that everybody likes. Um, you know, what's the what's the saying? You can't please everyone. You're not pizza. Um, so. Yeah, don't try and make something that everyone could like. That's a big, a big, a big no-no. And then someone else said, hopefully someone will like my designs enough to purchase. Again, um, this a couple of things that jumped out to me here. Hopefully someone, someone, as in anyone, is it who? Who are we talking about? Who's going to buy your design? Um, will like my designs enough to purchase? This person seems to think that um, that your designs are. Um, that people are the people who might buy your designs are just kind of scrolling through loads of designs on the internet, just kind of looking out for something interesting. But they're not. They're they're jumping into specific. They're searching for specific things, and if you don't deliver those things, then um, they're never going to purchase. So this is not a game of you know people scrolling through. Hopefully they'll like something. That's not what's going on here. You have to put yourself in a position to be found in the first place and have a design that stands out and uh, and does really well there. So just a couple of flashing warning signs. And then this is one of our foundational principles, uh, the who, the why, and the how. These are the three big questions that we want to ask before we create a design or, you know, as you're analyzing your, your concepts for designs. 
And number one, who is going to wear it? Who are the, who is the person you're designing for? Who's going to buy it? You know, who who is that person? Why would they want to wear it? So what's the motivation? You know, why, why would someone want to wear it? Um, there's many different reasons why someone might want to wear something. Maybe it sends a message or it's a funny joke or it's really aesthetically pleasing. Uh, these are all considerations. And how are they going to find it? So how are they going to find it? You know, the internet is not some big catalog that people just stumble through. People go and look for things and they're on, you know, they're on a mission to find something and they search. That's really the only way you're going to be found um, in the first place. So how are they going to find it? You know, what search terms are they going to use? Um, all those considerations need to be uh, need to be thought about. So that's one of our foundational principles. Uh, just want to get that in there. Um, I'm not going to get through everyone's designs here, of course. We we won't have time to do that. Um, if you if you can see your name down here towards the bottom, um, my my advice to you would be uh, think about these three questions because because I don't think I can really help you too much, and I think that you need to ask yourself you know, the who, the why, and the how questions and kind of go back a little bit and uh, build on that foundation. So um, people in the green, I feel like I can give you some advice and help you. Uh, people in the red and in the dark red, um, very a lot more difficult for me to really get a, a handle on what's, uh, what's going on there. So a um, couple of questions before we dive in then. Um, Anna Lee said, uh, after you pick a specific niche, do you need to stay within that niche with multiple designs or can I switch around? Um, uh, Anna Lee, you can definitely switch around. There's various um, uh, ways of doing so. You know, there's no, there's no rule that says you have to stay in a particular niche. Um, there's no rule saying you can't have separate stores or separate brands for different niches. Um, it's really whatever works for you. Um, but typically when it comes to prints on demand, um, I don't think you need to worry too much about, you know, having one uh, brand. You know, you, you, people are going to find your stuff through search. And if they like your design enough and there's nothing glaringly wrong with where it's being sold, then they're probably going to purchase it. And they're probably not going to be too concerned about, you know, the brand that surrounds it and all your other designs and stuff. So hope that helps. Um, all right, we're going to dive into some of the stuff here. I had some other things I wanted to talk about, but we'll miss those out because we don't have time. Um, so let's start here. Um, Callie, you were first up. Congratulations, Callie. Um, and uh, <laughs> the link didn't work. Okay, great. <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, why didn't that link work when I pulled it up? It still doesn't want to work. Okay, brilliant. So now I'm going to have to go and search for things before I can find them. You can tell I'm a little out of practice when it comes to um, <laughs> when it comes to this. Um, mm, Got it. I'm here. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Kelly, I can see you. You're there. Here's your design. Okay, great. Tis the season. And Kelly, you said um, this is a rough draft. Would love to hear your thoughts on color, text layout, and um, so on and so forth. Um, thank you for this one, Kelly. Um, the reason I uh, picked this as the first one is I think this is really good. Um, a couple of things that you get. Right. Obviously, this is a sketch, not the final design. Um, but there's a lot of things that are really good here. Let me see if I can make this a bit. Uh, can I move myself over? Oops, a daisy. Sorry. So, um, yeah, a couple of things that are really cool. Um, where to begin? Uh, we've got a, a message here. So we've got a joke that's, that's solid, right? We've got the old... Um, Jewish people eat Chinese food at Christmas, right? That's apparently the, the thing. Um, um, Kelly says, I searched for this after I drew this out, and there are many designs with the same theme with that identifiable, identifiable Chinese food box. Yeah, well, that just kind of proves the overall concept, I guess, doesn't it? But, um, but yeah, it is the season, so it's the season for 
Chinese food if you're Jewish. Um, colors, good. So we got blue and white, like the Israeli flag, and you know that's a good initial start. Um, we've got you you're clearly going to use like the uh, takeaway classic takeaway font, so we're kind of making a visual reference that people are going to get and understand. Um, little you know stars of David around that's really clear and nice as well. So I think it ticks a lot of the boxes. You know, we've got a message, we've got a joke. Um, I also think you could explore the same topic in in you know with some different phrasing as well. Like one of the things that occurred to me was. Um, instead of tis the season, you could do something like it's beginning to look a lot like Chinese takeaway or something like that. Um, so, you know, ask yourself, are there other kind of Christmassy phrases or something we could also play into and play on that? But I think this is a really good concept. Um, I think the layout in general is is pretty good. I'd probably go tis the on the same line and just use the the stars to kind of take up some of the dead space as well. Um, but I think you're on to a, a winner there. I'll just make sure you keep the, the palette kind of limited. Um, I think it reminded me of is um, the kind of uh, Lost Boys thing. Um, there are only noodles, Michael. Uh, that's a T-shirt I've seen a few times. Um, so, yeah, I think if you drew, draw a kind of classic um, Chinese takeaway box like this, hopefully without the worms, um, <laughs> Then, uh, then that would work nice on a kind of navy t-shirt or something like that. So, so yeah, cool one, Kelly. Thank you for that. Um, let's go over to Ross, who's got this one here. Uh, cranking nineties since twelve hundred. So, took me a half a second to kind of get this one, not being a uh, a, a chess player. Um, um, myself or, or being a aspiring chess player who's still struggling with it. Um, cranking 90s since 1200. So yeah, I get it. So um, what's this guy? The Knight? Is that what he's called? Um, so he moves in 90. Is that called a 90 degree or whatever? So he's cranking 90 since 1200. So yeah, cool. Nice concept. Um, clear um clear design, you know, works, readable. Um, I think if I'm going to be super critical, then um, I'd maybe rethink the font. Maybe we could go something even clearer just because you've got a, a font with an outline with the white instead of like being all solid white. Um, I, I think that would... Oh, there's some kind of Fortnite reference here. Didn't realize that. Okay, I'm out of the loop on the Fortnite thing. Um, I thought it was... Okay, there's some, there's some kind of Fortnite thing as well. That's fine. I'll just roll with it. Um, yeah, uh, font-wise, I think uh, just kind of... I don't think there's any need to do a font that's kind of outlined like this when you could just just done a solid white. Um, also, I'd probably prefer a, a sans-serif font rather than the serifs and stuff it just would be that much quicker to read and you know get the joke immediately and quickly but yeah there's not not a lot wrong with this not a lot to criticize it's a nice simple joke and i think if you're a chess guy or a chess dad or whatever you're probably gonna get it and um and yeah and on we go um aaron says he's going to educate me now cranking 90s is a term for building up higher and higher all while turning your character 90 degrees it's funny because a knight also moves in 90 degree turns. See, I knew the second part and thought that was the joke, but didn't know anything about the first part. So an extra layer of meaning there, which is always good. That's another check on the box. So that's cool. Well done, Ross. Thank you for that one. Hope that helped you somehow. Rick, um, Rick, you didn't send a specific design, but you sent me your T Public store. Um, so here we can see... Uh, how many designs have you got up here, Rick? About 49, and you're in London as well. Um, so, Rick, um, the reason I wanted to, the reason I gave you a green, um, put you up here, is that um, I can see you've got a lot of the kind of art fundamentals down pretty well. Like, you seem to be able to to do nice, clear illustration. Um, I can see you've got some some good kind of pun 
chops going on. Um, oh my good. Uh, I liked only ghouls and ho and hearses, although I'd prefer to see that one as you know the actual original only fools and horses logo. I don't know why you didn't try and you know reference that somehow. Um, I think you know you could have done something like that for our American friends. Only fools and horses is a, a classic British comedy show, which won't mean anything to you, but um, yeah, I, I thought that could have been something you could have explored there. Um, but in general, uh, Rick. Um, what I would say is that you've got, you seem to have got the illustration, you know, you're, you're a decent illustrator and you've got an illustration style that works for t-shirts and that's good. Uh, like this one, by the way, the sweet relief um, guy, that's cool. What I think you could use help with Rick is, um, is the putting together of designs and also the kind of strength of concepts. Um, like a lot of these are what I would say on the weaker end when it comes to concepts or they're not really executed that, that well, or there's things that are kind of tripping them up. Um, so I think you've definitely got the, the illustration and design chops. Um, but I think there's, there's certainly more to be done around the conceptual side in terms of picking good ideas, arriving at strong ideas and then executing them, them better. So, um, but yeah, some good stuff there. I just think there's, you know, keep going. And, um, if you've not already got my, my book or, um, you're not familiar with some of my, or you're not on my newsletter and stuff, then I think it would be really helpful for you to, um, familiarize yourself with some concepts from, from my book and stuff like that to help you. So hope that helps. Um, Anna Lee. I know you're here, and again, that link is not going to work, so that's super annoying, and um, I'm going to have to come over to my email and find those designs, but I will do that. Uh, okay, Anna Lee, you had uh, two designs that you wanted me to look at. Um, oh, no. <laughs> here we go. Uh, I find your lack of fanny pack disturbing. So um, I like this. I think there's uh, a lot going for it, uh, Anna Lee. Um, I, I do have some improvements, I think. So I think the, the concept is strong. You know, I, I find your lack of fanny pack disturbing. I think that's funny. I think what's letting it down a bit is the, is the design, which I think you've tried to make a kind of 90s, reference in the visuals i can see you know some of the triangles and the shapes but i think because of the limited color palette and also some of the font choices it's not that clear so if we do like a 90s fanny pack just did a search for like that and looked at images okay we're going to just get pictures of fanny packs aren't we but um um what if we did a search for 90s fanny pack t-shirts so here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Um, this is um, more what I'd expect to see, like uh, some more contrast. So, you know, maybe it's blues and pinks. Or um, if we just do a search for like 90s T-shirt, um, you know, these, uh, what's a good example here? Like this kind of color palette would be, would make it extra clear. Um, and some of the font choices as well, um, or something like this. So, Annalie, you say you were trying to do Star Wars colors. Yeah, um, you know, that's, where are we? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that's really coming across in the design. I'm not getting the Star Wars vibe. I agree, you, could, you can kind of lean two ways with a design like this. You can go... You know, because it's making a Star Wars reference, but it's also about fanny packs, you can either make it fanny pack and 90s or you can make it Star Warsy. Um, I think the fanny pack 90s way is going to be more effective. I don't think the Star Wars ray is really going to, you know, lend much to the design. So I think, you know, this kind of 90s style, a more uh, colorful approach, um, and I would look at the font choices. You probably want this kind of, um, as Ray says here, 90s Memphis style elements, that kind of thing, and font choices. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely um, uh, – that, that's the recommendation, I would say, for this design is to lean into that that style. And that probably is going to mean a 
maybe a lighter t-shirt background color as well, probably not on the black. Although there are ways to do, you know, a 90s style t-shirt on black as well. Um, but, but yeah. Um, and if you need, you know, it's like, here's some examples here. Um, this kind of thing that works well on a black. So yeah, those, those kind of colors I think would, would make it pop a little bit more. Um, I didn't mean to say make it pop as in, you know, generic graphic designer term, but, um, make it pop in a good way. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, Ray, yeah, sure. Go ahead and link link up whatever you want. That's fine. Um, cool. So thanks for that, Anna Lee. And then you had uh, one more, which I have to admit I struggle with, even though I like the design. Um, and that's this one here. Runs with hamsters, um, which is very cute. Uh, doesn't look to me like a t-shirt design primarily. Um, looks like a... Uh, a nice greetings card or something like that, um, or even a nice poster. And I'm not really clear if there's a, a reference I'm missing. Um, the thing that jumped out to me was a, a kind of, you know, Indian dances with wolves kind of thing, like runs with runs with the bear, runs with the deer or something like that, runs with hamsters instead. Uh, book cover says James, yeah, it does look nice, like a good book cover, um, but doesn't look like a T-shirt. So I'm kind of struggling with that one. Um, if I'm honest, um, yeah, runs with wolves. That's that's what I was thinking. Um, uh, yeah, if that's the if that's the joke that you, you're gunning at, then I would try and do a more of a cowboy. Um, what's the word? Indian Indians, American Indians vibe somehow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that would look like off the bat, but um, it probably wouldn't look like this. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, hope that helps, Annalee. Uh, Lucy, 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 Lucy. And now I'm going to have to find your design as well, Lucy. So bear with me two seconds here. Oh yeah. Um, I've got you, Lucy. So Lucy, yeah. Um, so you sent through some, some stuff. Um, <laughs> And just trying because you sent through quite a bit. So um, uh, let me just pull up um, this one first. So here we got uh, this one, which says duck wits, and I won't say the uh, uh, the reference. Um, so uh, Lucy, this is. You clearly have a nice illustrations, illustrative style, illustration style, um, which is kind of watercolory and, um, you know, looks like would be very good for like children's book illustration and that kind of thing. Uh, you, are, you are flexible. I can see you've, you've got um, this other design here, the cat versed design, which is nice. Um, and uh, just one more to prove my point. You've clearly got, you know, good graphic design chops and um, you're able to make things look like what they should look like. So here we've got a nice kind of badge design, which is really nice uh, and a good concept as well. You know, this kind of welcome to rock bottom, that kind of thing. Um, so I can see some some good stuff here, uh, Lucy. I think, um, uh you know, for example, you're and you, you sent over some sketches as well, um, but like here the the ducks and stuff. Um, I think the style here is not ideal for t-shirt design. So, um, you know, this kind of watercolor. Um, you know, lots of there's going to be obviously lots of different color color stuff going on here. We're not talking about like one or two colors. Uh, you know, it's not going to have a kind of screen printed effect. It's going to have a very gradienty, washy, watercolor kind of look, which is not ideal um, for T-shirts. It's not going to look that great when it's printed. But concept wise, you know, these are good. Um, your cat versed one is is better in terms of like more appropriate for a T-shirt. Um, uh, and again, these are I mean, these designs, these are what I would call like wordplay designs. So they're. Um, you know, they're funny, certainly, and they certainly can sell, but they they kind of work on just kind of one level, which is a, a kind of wordplay level, a kind of technical level. Like they're funny because of a 
you know, a play on words, which is fine. It's kind of difficult to um, uh, to really engage people with with such designs. You know, they either like them or they don't. Um, you know, if they take off, then great. But, um, you know, you're probably going to have to create a lot of these type of designs before you really get a kind of steady income from them. So, yes, good, funny. But because they're just kind of that one wordplay, they've only got that one wordplay angle to them. It's kind of, you know, they're, they're less strong than a design like this, which is making, uh, which kind of has a contextual reference, right? Uh, because this is, this is kind of playing on, oh, you know, everything's bad. It's 2020, uh, you know, since 2020, everything's been terrible and uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket or whatever and those kind of things. So for me, this is a better concept. Um, I think the design needs work. Obviously, I don't think this is a finished version. Um, and there's a bit a bit too much going on for my liking, but I think that can be tweaked. Um, I, you've gone for welcome, this is rock bottom i would um recommend something like greetings from rock bottom or welcome to rock bottom um maybe even try and do like a vintage travel uh postcard kind of style so this kind of you know uh big text kind of vibe uh this kind of thing you know i think that could work well you know greetings from rock bottom um Embrace the suck or something like that. I think that could that could work well. Um, but even as you've got it here, I think that's that's nice. You know, just another potential angle you could try. And then you sent over some sketches as well, which I really liked. Um, uh, we got this sloth one, um, and you've got some good ideas here, like all in good time would be good. Um, don't rush me. Life's a marathon, not a sprint. These are all good phrases you could match with a cute illustration of a of a sloth. So definitely some, some good concepts here. So I think you've got a, a strong conceptual brain from what I can see, Lucy. Um, I think it's probably more a case for you of um, fitting those with the right design style and illustration style and really learning what works well for a, for, for products. So t-shirts obviously is my bread and butter, but obviously there's other products, uh, stickers and mugs and posters. Um, but yeah, kind of zoning in and trying to perfect and get really good at, at, at what works best on a t-shirt would be where I think you, you were going to get the most uh, benefit from. Um, okay, we got only 10 minutes. We've only got through like five or six. This is a terrible thing. Colleen, uh, you're up next. Um, Colleen, you um, have a Redbubble store, which you sent through. And Colleen... Um, I think, Colleen, that you have a similar, uh, yeah, 24-hour live stream starts now. I don't think my wife would be too happy about that one, Aaron. Um, uh, Colleen, I, I sc sc scrolled through your store. Um, I, I'd say kind of hit and miss, but what I can see is some funny, some genuinely, like, funny concepts and stuff, like your... Um, I'd be laughing if not for the existential dread. Um, and this particular one that I pulled out, you know, shut up, it's my love language. So what I see with your stuff, Colleen, is good concepts, not really well executed for T-shirt designs, like this kind of thing here. You know, you're making a lot of kind of rookie errors with uh, designs that have background colors or are just, uh, you know, not going to look nice on a product. And I think even if your concepts and your message and your text is really funny, if you make rookie mistakes, like, you know, fill the background up and, and just, you know, make poor layout choices, like, like we see here, um, this is where you're going to fall down. So, um, so yeah, you've got some good jokes and concepts um but even like this one uh shut up it's my love language um i read that as shut up that's my love language as in my love language is shut up and i think flipping that around would be funnier if you said my love language is shut up shut up um that would be that would be funnier and that would read better um again like the the design 
concepts and the layout here is not really that strong. Um, I don't know why, you know, there's a lot of dead space here. Um, it, it doesn't really flow. I, I don't know why we've got um, like three characters that look like a family at the top. I don't know. You, you, you make some strange kind of design choices, um, but I think you have a, a good conceptual kind of brain, if that makes sense. And there's some funny ideas there. So I uh, hope that helps you, Colleen. Zawitis. Um, all mushrooms are edible, uh, some only once. And we've got some happy mushrooms and a dead one. So um, Zawatis, I can see, again, you, you've got some good design chops. And again, I think, um, you know, stuff like this, the counts on me, that's nice, that's cute. Um, I think, again, probably let down a little bit in... Um, concept or just kind of matching them together there's just some sometimes things are a little bit um a little bit off like um i, I mean i chose the mushrooms one because i thought that was probably one of your your strongest ones um you know nice choice of colors nice choice of fonts clear and readable um aesthetically pleasing to look at I'm not sure. I feel like though, with the, even with this design, we could kind of take a step back and, and find a, a stronger um, way of displaying it. I don't know. Nothing's um, actually jumping out at me while I'm looking at it. Probably something to do with trying to do this live without preparing. Um, but um, but yeah, I just think you know, there's some some decent concepts here, and um, but there's some some that are kind of let down by design choices, like um, here with the better latte than never, like um, like this is a good example. Um, you know, the, the hook here of this design is, and I think we've seen this before actually, haven't we? Um, the hook here is, the, is this, latte versus late, right? We've got a replacement pun, a joke, better late than never, better latte than never. Um, but the the fo the thing taking up the most space is the illustration. Now the illustration should really support the the joke, if you like. And in fact, what happens is the text is kind of getting a bit lost when it you know it, it comes over here, and then it's kind of a little bit difficult to read, especially on this color choice of of shirt. Uh, a bit better there, but yeah, there's you know. I don't know why you've chosen to as well, like the tech putting the better on this angle here. So I have to kind of almost turn my head to read the first words. Like these are all choices that are, are just kind of making it extra more difficult than it should be for, for people to buy your designs, I think. And I think you could really row back and get just a lot simpler. And you, maybe you're trying to be a bit too clever sometimes with how you're attacking things. Um, even here, like Schrodinger's cat, like there's definitely a funny concept to be had there, but, um, you know, cat is kind of slightly hidden behind the ear. You know, it's a really cute illustration and a good, and a good idea. But, um, again, are you just making things a little bit difficult for people to, uh, uh, to kind of say yes to your designs, if that makes sense. So, Hope that helps you, Zawatis. Um, Sarah, I think you're going to have to be our last one. Sorry that we haven't been able to get to many today, guys. I think we might do the same thing again next week, and hopefully we won't have uh, mistakes like um, this week. Um, Sarah in Ireland. Um, Sarah, you've got, you have got you did send a specific design, but I, I think I just wanted to pull up your, your overall Etsy store. Um, now you've only got um, 22 different designs here and obviously that's not a lot so you know you can't really expect uh, regular sales here when you when you've got such a small number of, of designs in the first instance um, and you do have designs that seem to span a lot of different kind of approaches and and markets if you like we've got some mushroom stuff we've got some uh, uh, we've got the keep calm and carry on my wayward son. We've got some meme based stuff like the pickle wick and the Ugandalorian. Um, so 
and then we've got the cute um uh cute pun illustration things cute vector illustrations um so i think um I mean, usually with Etsy stores, I, I would like to try and keep them on theme. I think you're a little bit spread across maybe a few too, too many niches, particularly for my for my uh, for, for what I'd be most comfortable with. Um, but I think you've got you've obviously got good design ability and illustration ability. Um, I think I, I would really recommend that you keep going and try and maybe figure out what your differentiation is. So, you know, where can you do something? Because these are, for lack of a better term, a little bit generic um, in in design style. You know, um, you know, wake me up before you cocoa is very nice and funny, um, but the illustration and the design. Is is not there's not really much there to set it apart from from other cute you know vector illustrations of which there will be many, and which are relatively um, uh, you know simplistic and relatively easy for people to to replicate. So um, for example, so this is a print I can see that you've got here, not a, a t-shirt or anything. Um, you know, if you're doing a print of um, a joke like this, like. I, I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do, um, you know, like a background color or something like that. If you're trying to sell a print, you know, if you're doing a poster or a mug um, or something like that, uh, greetings cards, then I, I don't really see any reason why you would have a white background. Uh, to me, I would I would take the opportunity to to put in a solid background color or even a pattern background, or maybe to fill up some of the some of the dead space. Um, you know, if this was a T-shirt, then of course you know, you, you need dead space, you need a transparent background, but not for a print. You know, you can, you can say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make a decision about what the background color should be. And, and maybe you, uh, you know, if it's a Christmas design, you put some snow in there and you put some, you put a background in, you put um, some trees, some Christmas trees, or, you know, some stars in the sky or whatever it might be. Um, those would all be ways to improve the chances, I think, of that selling as a print. Um, so I would I would ask questions like that, you know, how can you set yourself apart? Because um, it's going to be relatively easy for any illustrator to come along and and take the pun, dreaming of a white Christmas, and do their own version of it. So can you do something, you know, that sets yourself apart, that levels up your illustration, that adds in some more detail, or gives yourself more of a uh, helps you stand out, you know, from the from the rest of the crowd. Um, so yeah, um, that's my advice to you, Sarah. Hope that helps. Um, George, Mary, Katerina, Z, Roland, Jose, Jeffrey, Daniel, Chris, Tarini, Trevor, Darren, Josephine, London, Mikhail, Karen, George, Alfredo, Casania, Kim, Manuel, and David. I'm afraid we're not going to get to you today because I've got to get myself uh, home. <laughs> Uh, it's five o'clock here, and uh, yeah, I got to get on my bike and get myself home, literally on my bike. Um, but thank you all for joining me today. Uh, just in the last few seconds that we've got here, um, if you did get something out of this, and I know it's a bit shorter than usual and we didn't get through everything, um, but I do have um, a couple of ebooks which are completely free, which you can get hold of at the link. Uh, down there, michaelessig.com forward slash live. So five ways to improve your ideas. So if you're looking for ways to level up your ideas, uh, have an ebook and I, the idea files ebook. That's another one. Um, but when you sign up, you also join my free weekly newsletter. So I send tips out every Tuesday, um, which will really help you in various aspects of growing an art business online. Um, so if you're not already signed up, michaelessig.com forward slash live to join my newsletter. Um, I also offer private consultations. So if you like what you saw here, uh, but maybe you're too shy to share your designs, you don't want to share things publicly, um, but you would like, you know, one-to-one -one attention, one-to-one -one feedback, you'd like a personalized plan and you'd like me to take a look over your store, over your designs um, with and, and to give you some practical, usable advice that's just for you. Um, then you can sign up at michaelessig.com forward slash consult for a private consultation. And finally, um, 
If you're not already aware, I have a course and a membership called the Ideas Workshop. This includes uh, my course called the Ideas Workshop, which helps you learn how to generate original ideas that sell. But we also have a private community, which is open 24 hours and where you can get direct help from me and from other members. And uh, you don't have to wait for me to send out an email and ask for your designs and then uh, wait 20 minutes and then find yourself in a Google sheet at the bottom and da-da-da. You can actually get help anytime you need it by posting in our private community. Um, and I respond to, to stuff there every day. Uh, weekly live calls where you can ask questions and get direct help from me. And also an unlimited Ideally account, which is something we won't have time to get into today, but it's my custom-built tool, which helps you come up with original ideas. That's the Ideas Workshop. Uh, you can find out more, michaelessig.com forward slash ideas, if you want help with your ideas um, on a more regular basis, i.e. whenever you need it. So uh, just some ways you can get some help from me, uh, the Ideas Workshop, private consultations, and of course you can sign up for my free weekly newsletter and get some free goodies there. So um, thank you guys for joining me today. We're going to wrap it up there. Thank you, Henning and uh, Annalie and uh, David and Facebook user, uh, Dream Big, Svetlana, Matt, Annalie uh, says workshop slash ideally is amazing. Just started this. Wonderful. Thank you, Annalie, for, uh, for joining us inside the Ideas Workshop. Um, thank you, Bo. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Carol um, and Matt. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Have a great rest of your Thursday, wherever you're watching from, and um, keep an eye on your inbox uh, because we hopefully will do another one of these next week um, or, if not, shortly thereafter. And, uh, you know, we'll keep the uh, keep the energy high and we'll have less technical difficulties next time. So thanks for joining me. Hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, talk soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.